it's time for maths with Mr. Thomas. Let's do this. Vectors, chapter 13, lesson number nine, properties of the scalar product. Now we were introduced to the scalar product a couple of lessons ago. The scalar product a dot b equals the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cos theta. What we are now going to do is to summarize what we have learned about that and introduce a couple more properties. So property one, you know for your scalar product you need a couple of vectors that are tail to tail. So you need them pointing out from the vertex. The angle that you get could either be between 0 and 90 degrees, it could be 90 degrees, or it could be bigger, it could be between 90 and 180 degrees. If you're working out your scalar product, A dot B, then if you have the angle theta between 0 and 90, well, you know the cost of anything between 0 and 90 is going to be positive. Think about cast, okay, in that first quadrant, all sine, cos, and tan are positive. So you'll be working out the length times the length times a positive number. In other words, a dot b will be positive. Woo! If you had the angle as 90 degrees, again, this is something that we have come across already, but you will end up with a dot b equals the length times the length times cos theta. If theta was 90 degrees, well, what is the cos of 90? Zero! Brilliant. So it's the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times 0, giving you just 0. And if theta was between 90 and 180 degrees, then you would have again magnitude of a times magnitude of b times cos theta. But in that second quadrant between 0 and 90, between 90 and 180 degrees, well, cos there is a negative number. So it means your answer will be negative for your scalar product for a dot b. Some more properties. Property 2. Well, you know a dot b, it tells you up here, woo! It tells you that that is equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cos theta. When you are multiplying, though, if you work out 7 times 8, that's the same as 8 times 7. So if you have the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b, well, it could also be the magnitude of b times the magnitude of a times cos theta. So really, if you have b and a and cos theta, you could also say that's b dot a. In other words, a dot b is the exact same as b dot a. Property 3, it can be shown, there are proofs for this, uh, but if you have a dot and in brackets b plus c, well that is the same as a dot b plus a dot c. Also taking that further, oh yes, you could have a plus b dot c plus d and that is the same as a dot c plus a dot d plus b dot c plus b dot d. In other words, it's the same as just multiplying out the brackets just the way you have been doing for years. Also, another property, the angle between a vector and itself. So in other words, if you have two vectors, but really it's the exact same one, so you get the two vectors, they're basically lying on top of each other, uh, then the angle between them will be zero. So if you had to work out a dot a, well, you know that's a magnitude of a times the magnitude of a times cos zero. And we all know that cos of 0 is going to be 1, so it's the magnitude of a times the magnitude of a times 1. In other words, you're just going to get the magnitude of a squared, because it's magnitude of a times the magnitude of a. Another property, property 5, thinking of the unit vectors i, j, and k. Remember, i is the unit vector in the x direction, j is in the y direction, again, just a length of 1, and k is going to be the unit vector in the z direction. Again, a length of 1. If you multiply them by themselves, well, i dot i is going to be the magnitude of i times the magnitude of i times cos of 0. It's the same vector. They're lying on top of one another. There's 0 degrees between them. The length, though, of your unit vector is just 1. So that becomes 1 times 1, and the cos of 0 is just 1. So it's really 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. Woo! If you worked out j dot j, well, it's the same thing. It's the unit vector of length 1, so it's the length 1 times length 1 times the cos of 0. So it's, again, it's 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. And the exact same thing for k, if you worked out k dot k. Something else with the unit vectors i, j, and k, you also know that they are mutually perpendicular. In other words, i is perpendicular to j, there's 90 degrees between them. 
or with J and K, again, there's 90 degrees between them, or with K and I, again, there's 90 degrees between them. So if you're working out any combination, such as I dot J, well, that's the magnitude of I times magnitude of J times cos 90. It's always 90 degrees between them. The length of each one is 1, so it's really the length of 1 times the length of 1 times the cos of 90. What would that be, Sandy? Zero. Yes. So you would end up with? Zero. Yes. Well done. And it's the exact same for any combination. If you worked out I dot K, well, that's the length of I, length K, magnitude of I times the magnitude of K times cos 90 again. Cos of 90 is always zero, so you're always going to get zero. And again, if you add J dot K. Let's try some examples then that would use these. Example one, let A equal 2I minus K, B equals I plus 2J plus K, and C is going to be negative J plus K. First of all, part A, evaluate A dot B plus A dot C, and part B, make a deduction about A and B plus C. So the first thing that we want to do, how would you do this, Valley? Perfect, you're wanting to think about each of the vectors in component form. So vector A, well, because it's 2i, 0j, and then negative 1k, you would have 2, 0, and negative 1. For vector B, you would have 1i plus 2j plus 1k, so you have 1, 2, 1. And C is going to be 0, because there's 0i, negative 1j, so negative 1, and 1k, so that brings in the 1. If you are to evaluate a dot b plus a dot c, well really, for that, what you're doing is you're working out a dot b first of all, so it's 2 times 1 plus 0 times 2 plus negative 1 times 1, but then you're adding on a dot c, and a dot c is when you would do 2 times 0 plus 0 times negative 1 plus negative 1 times 1, as it's written out here. Just be very careful with all of these brackets. From that then, that would give you 2, that gives you 0, that gives you take away 1, and then you're adding on, and then this bracket, you'd have 0, 0, and then take away 1, which then becomes 2, take away 1, take away 1, which gives us 0. Part B, make a deduction about A and B plus C. Well, for that, you know already that A dot B plus A dot C equals 0. From there, remember, you can really multiply out the brackets the same way you do when you're just uh, in algebra. So if we go back the way and factorize that, well, we've got a vector A and a vector A. So we could have vector A dot, and then in brackets, you can put down B plus C, and that equals 0. But remember, if you have a dot b and it equals 0, then it means those two vectors a and b are going to be perpendicular. Here, it's going to be vector a times vector b plus c. So it means then that vector a is going to be perpendicular to b plus c. And that would be your answer. Example two, evaluate a dot and in brackets you have vector a plus vector b plus vector c. And you've got this diagram here, so you can see vector A and B. You can see the length of vector A is 4, B is 2, and vector C, coming up here, you've got a length of 3. So for this, if you have to evaluate A dot, A plus B plus C, well, you know, first of all, you can multiply out the brackets. So it's A dot A plus A dot B plus A dot C. For that then, A dot A, what's the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B? A, again, times cos. Well, really, if you've got the same vector, the two vectors will be on top of one another. One another. There's zero degrees between them, so you're just going to have cos zero. A dot B is going to be the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times cos and the angle this time. Well, you can see the vectors here. They're pointing away from the vertex. There's 60 degrees between them, so you would have cos 60. A dot C is the magnitude of A times the magnitude of C times cos. And again, think about the size of the angle. Well, for this, you've got one vector pointing in towards the vertex and one coming out. So really, you have to move this vector A and you'd have to move it down here. If you slide it over, it would still have the same length, same direction, but you would have that angle of 60 degrees between vector A, if you slide it down, and vector C. So the angle would be 60 degrees. From there then, the magnitude of A is just 4, is length of 4, times length of 4, times cos of 0 is 1, plus you would have 4 times 2 times, and the cos of 60, you just use your exact value triangles, that is a half, plus 
four times the length of c is three, so it's four times three times, and again, the cos of 60 is one half. Again, use these exact value triangles, make sure you know them, or another method. Simplifying that, it gives you 16 add four add six, which is 26. Woo! So that is what you would get if you evaluate them. Example three, the sides of this funky equilateral triangle are four units long, so every side is four. Evaluate once again a dot a plus b plus c, and a plus b and c are in brackets. So to work this out then, you know you can multiply out the brackets here, that's a dot a plus a dot b plus a dot c. Thinking then, if you had to work out a dot a, well that's the magnitude of a times the magnitude of a, times cos, and if you have the same vector, one is lying on top of the other, there's zero degrees between them. You're going to add on a dot b is the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cos. Think about this, it's an equilateral triangle, so you know all the angles are going to be 60 degrees, so in here that will be 60 degrees, I'm trying to draw this with the mouse. You've got the vectors pointing out from this vertex, so the angle between them is 60 degrees. A dot C is the magnitude of A times the magnitude of C times cos. Again, you're wanting the size of the angle, but for this, it's going to be vector A and vector C. C is pointing out from the vertex, but A is pointing in. So once again, you're going to be sliding that vector over. So you're moving A over. It's obviously going to go off the screen, uh, but it would be the same length and the same direction, meaning then that the 60 degrees of all the angles is not the angle between A and C. You're wanting them both pointing out, so it's this angle that you want. So you'd have a straight line, and in here, you'd have 120 degrees, which is why you'd have the magnitude of A times magnitude of C times cos 120. They're now both pointing out from the vertex. Again, A is obviously longer than that, but it's just off the screen. From there then, the magnitude of A times the magnitude of A times cos zero is just going to be four times four times one. The length of A and B, again, are just going to be 4 and 4, and the cos of 60 would be a half. Brilliant. Well done. Uh, A and C, so you would have 4 times 4 once again, and cos of, well, cos of 120. 120 degrees is in the second quadrant. That's where cos is a negative, so it's the same as a negative. And think about the size of the acute angle. So it's 60 degrees away from 180. And cos of 60, use the exact value triangles just below, just here, and you would get one half. So it's negative a half. Simplify that, and you get 16 plus 8 minus 8, which gives us 16. Woo! So that is your answer. Let's try one more. This diagram shows an isosceles triangle. The two shorter sides have length 6, and you have to calculate u dot w. So it's an isosceles triangle, so this side and this side are going to be the same. You know there's, there's a right angle in here, but let's think about the other angles. Well, it's isosceles, all the angles add to 180, take the 90 away and you're left with 90 degrees. So in here, you would have 45 degrees, which I can hardly write with the mouse. And up here as well, you would have 45 degrees. From there, you are asked to calculate u dot W. So for this, well really, you've got these sides here, you know they've got a length of, length of 6, you know that's 90, you know that each of the angles is 45, but we don't know this length here, and we are going to have to work out the length, because if we expand u dot w, it's the magnitude of u times the magnitude of w times cos of the angle. So, the length then of w, first of all, how would you work that out? Well, just use your Pythagoras, it's a right angle triangle. So you would have the square root of 6 squared plus 6 squared, which is the square root of 36 out 36, which is root 72. And if you simplify that, using your knowledge of thirds, it just becomes 6 root 2. So that would be the length of w. The angle between them then, again, if you worked out u dot w, it's the magnitude of u, which we know, it's the magnitude of w, which you now know, times cos of a theta, and theta is going to be the angle between them. But the angle between them this time, well, if you think about the vectors, you've got u and you've got w, but they are both not pointing away from this vertex. So do the same with vector u, just slide that over so it'll be heading in this direction. Again, it's going off the screen, um, but they would still have the same length, it would have a length of six, and the angle between them, 
would be this angle here with them both pointing away from the vertex. So you would have then an angle of 135 degrees, obviously if this vector was the same length as you if you slid it over. From that then, u dot w is the magnitude of u times the magnitude of w times cos of 135. From that, you are going to end up with 6 times 6 root 2, that is the length of w, and you're multiplying that by, well, the cos of 135, 135 degrees is in the second quadrant, their cos is a negative, so you're going to end up with negative, and it's 45 degrees away from 180, and the cos of 45, adjacent over hypotenuse, 1 over root 2. From there, if you simplify that, you will end up with negative 36. So that will be your answer. Try some of these questions and the properties of the scalar product. It's in the Maths in Action Higher Book, page 214, exercise 10. Check your answers as you go. Good luck. Bye.